For over three years, a large Danish-led group of scientists from 14 European universities has researched, dissected and discussed such issues as what will the agriculture of the future be like and what will Europeans be eating in 10 years' time. In this series of documentaries, we have followed in the footsteps of the researchers and focused on the upheavals that will change rural life forever. Arsen Heitoff from Bulgaria and Kjartan Paulsen from Denmark. Two dairy farmers from different parts of Europe. Both their lives are all about milk, but their situations are as contrasting as if they lived in different centuries. But they do have some things in common. Their continued existence as farmers is threatened and both receive EU agricultural subsidies from a system which applies the same rules to regulate and support the businesses of two men who have nothing in common other than cows, udders and milk. The EU has created a system which pays out nearly 50 billion euro a year in direct agricultural subsidies. Milk has become part of a huge political game which few people can begin to understand and fewer still can fully comprehend. In this program, we tell the story of why milk is so complicated. We're in southern Jutland in Denmark, where there are dairy farms everywhere. Gården er økologisk. Vi har godt 300 køer. Organic dairy farmer Kjartan Poulsen is under pressure. Since Danish towns began to utilize straw for heating, the price has risen so much that he can no longer afford to buy it for his cowsheds. Here I would like to put a cow in a cow stall. In a half year, there is place for 400 cows here. It makes it so that we can pay the rent in the new stall, alone with the less than half of the we have. Kjartan and other Danish milk producers like him are also having to cope with the lowest milk prices for more than a decade. The prices that are now, they can we absolutely not live with. Do it, there are a lot of people that come to if this here is not in for them. But Kjartan's not alone in being under financial pressure. His problems are shared by farmers in many other places in Europe. We're in the Rodopi Mountains in Bulgaria, close to the border with Greece. I started in 1999. Maybe it sounds a little strange when I'm the first agricultural producer from Smolensk, like us. Arsen Heitoff is under financial pressure. The first manifestation on his farm of Bulgaria's new membership of the EU can be found behind the stone walls of the cowshed, a new cold room. The cold room was installed to meet EU requirements for milk storage. Without it, Arsene would no longer be allowed to supply milk to the local dairy. The new cold room meant a heavy investment. Bulgarian banks are very reluctant to lend money to farmers, especially those in the mountains. <laughs> But the cold room's an absolute necessity if he's to continue as a dairy farmer. No cold room, no sales. No sales, no EU subsidy. Bulgaria is like 10 leva on a decker land. 10 leva. Until in Europe, it's about 100 leva. We're talking about Така че разликата е в 10 пъти, около 10 пъти. Ако това не сме равни. So Arsen had to borrow the money for the cold room from family and friends. Ravaging wars and famine have always been part of the violent history of Europe. Ensuring a secure food supply for Europeans was therefore high on the agenda when politicians came to work together in an ever closer cooperation during the 50s and 60s. Common market subsidies were created to ensure that Europeans would always have access to food supplies. And these subsidies became a prerequisite for welfare, an issue which still arouses strong feelings when some countries such as Denmark call for their abolition. I 
Kjartan Paulsen is packing. He's making a journey in an effort to secure the future of his family. I think that it could go up and be a little skill set in the morning. He's going to Luxembourg to protest about conditions for dairy farmers to the EU agricultural ministers who are gathering for a crisis meeting. It feels as if we come come to that point every time. We come to that point to for ministers and the Commission to understand that this requires their intervention. The situation is serious. It grips me a little bit when I think it's unfair that this happens. I think it's unfair that we give them a lot of requirements, but we give them no opportunities. Så har vi kommet nogle bord. Så skal vi jo være her nogle timer. Kjartan er en medlem af den executive committee af den European Milk Board. Almost every week he has to travel somewhere for meetings or demonstrations. Vi har fået at vide fra, fra det politi i Luxembourg, at de accepterer dem. Ingen belade. Så vil det blive slået hårdt ned. De har nok også set tv-billederne fra Bruxelles her for 14 dage siden, hvor det var ved at det var ved at komme i år. In 2009, Kjartan and the partners in his business received 175,000 euro in subsidies, but that was not enough for the farm. Hvorfor skal vi have tilskud som landmænd? Det kan jeg også kun give ret i. Det er noget der er opbygget gennem mange år, fordi man har ønsket os at til at gøre noget bestemt. Når alt med med fødevareproduktion så er Prisen på de varer, der bliver solgt, den er ikke høj nok til at dække den faktiske produktionsomkostning. Og det har man også accepteret gennem rigtig mange år. Fordi at man siger, at fødevarer skal være billige, så dem, der ikke har så mange penge, de kan købe gode fødevarer. Og dermed har man så ved hjælp af tilskud sørget for at få det, man vil have. Kjæsberg, ja. Yeah, the problem is here yeah, from blockade. Block, yeah. yes. Hello. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm part of it. <laughs> In Luxembourg, they're used to seeing angry farmers protesting, since the European Parliament holds many meetings here. Protesting farmers are nothing new for the researchers of the AG2020 group either. Where they have to adjust to these new markets, to the new system. They were, they 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 enjoyed stable prices for more than 30 years. Of course, they complain about the situation now. They are not used to it. These are farmers; they are spoiled. They they are used to a system where yeah, somebody exactly. was keeping their hands under, so. yeah. and now this hand is slowly yeah. being pulled out, and they yeah. go like, "Oh, what should we do?" Arsen Heitoff, with his 38 dairy cows, is the biggest milk producer in the area. So big that he's well known in the surrounding mountain villages. The nearest is Jagadina, with its mosque, a couple of grocery stores, and a hotel and apartments for well-heeled tourists from Sofia, the capital. It's early in the morning, and Sofia's on her way to work at the little milk collection point where local farmers deliver their milk. Значи съвсем случайно една момче ми предложи, търсиха и скупчик на млека. Аз по професия съм електроинженер, но в момента работа за електроинженери въобще не можеше да се намери. After the fall of the communist regime in 1989, all Bulgaria's farming collectives were dismantled and the land and animals distributed to the original owners from 1945. This process left Bulgarian agriculture in ruins. 20 years later, the average size of Bulgarian dairy herds is 1.7 cows. The farmers bring their milk to Sofia, but with only one or two cows each, cooling units are out of the question for them. And when the EU regulations come fully into force, the dairy will not be allowed to accept uncooled milk from the mountain farmers. I'm absolutely on the path to the 
Просто единственото нещо, което ме кара, нали, все още е това, че съм работила доста години с тия хора и ми е малко неудобно така в един момент да кажа, вижте какво, няма да работя повече. Kjartan has arrived in Luxembourg. The streets are already filled with protesting farmers and it's difficult for him to make his way to the meeting of the European Milk Board. Jeg er ud til frisk, så, så tror jeg alle, at så er det bare fordi, vi vil have mere tilskud. Det er det faktisk ikke. Vi vil faktisk uh, gerne have tilskud afskaffet. The Milk Board has a clear aim for today's demonstration. They want the current EU land ownership based subsidies to be replaced with a new and better system. Vi er interesseret i at få nogle styringsmekanismer, som uh, kan styre markedet. Så vi skal have et uh, lovgrundlag, der gør, at, at, at vi kan oprette vores egen fond. Kjartan and his colleagues want to regulate the supply of milk in order to stabilize prices. A stable price for milk should be high enough to cover the costs of production. And they want a fund to be set up, for example, to enable the purchase and closure of farms that are not viable. It should be so that farmers have a food price that is reasonable and that på sin vis tror jeg egentlig, at det danske politi er meget, uh, finder sig rigtig meget i forhold til hvad her nede, men, men lige nok til hvad den slags angår, der er, er det egentlig hvide grænser. Like Kjartan from Denmark, Arsen Haitov in Bulgaria also wants to see changes in the EU rules. He receives virtually no subsidies from the EU. Пак тези хора, които имат връзки нагоре, те всичкото повлека. The only land Arsen actually owns is just that around the farmhouse. Most of the land on which he grazes his cows is not his. Не са на мой. Малко има мас. Това е общинска, това е на общината. The grazing slopes around his farm are owned by the municipality and are rented to another man in the area, and it's he who receives the EU subsidy even though he doesn't make use of the land. And you know that subsidies we receive, I mean, Romania and Bulgaria, they are per hectare, and uh, another very, very typical uh, problem for Bulgarian uh, livestock breeding, and uh, especially for dairy farming, is that uh, our farmers are landless and the subsidies are per hectare, they are per land. And they, our farmers, most of them, uh, they don't have land, so they could not receive any subsidies. Arsen feels cheated. It annoys him that another man receives a subsidy for the land on which his cows graze. One of them has subsidies, for example, for 1,000 hectares, one of 30 to 40,000 euros. That's a great deal for him. That's a great deal for the country. But what will be the growth of these hectares? Животовоство няма да развиваш, защото няма животни. Е как? Аз имам животни, нямаш. But even if Arsen Haitov owned the pastures on which his cows graze, he would still be significantly worse off than the farmers in the old EU countries, explains Diljana Slavova, head of the Bulgarian Milk Producers Association. We have lower subsidies, much lower than, for example, uh, the old member countries. It's creates unfair competition, and it's another story. It creates another problem. As far as the Bulgarian dairy farmers are concerned, the solution to the problem is simple. My belief is that uh, there is a need for the European Union to recognize these differences and introduce a policy which would be adjusted to the differences 30 years ago. 
the dairy sector development in uh, the older countries must have been at the level at which the dairy sector is in Bulgaria. Maybe even worse, maybe 40 years. A farmer like Arsen Haitov has to struggle to fulfill the EU requirements regarding hygiene and environment. By Western European standards, his farm is primitive. Okay. Bulgaria want to know why they don't get the same support yes, as the people exactly. from France did 20 <coughs> years exactly. ago. But, but and I think the expectation... They, they, came, they came later. Yeah, but and we <laughs> don't... It's not their fault, but I mean, it happened. We don't want to redo the same era we did yes. uh, with, with exactly. Western years Europe. Years The clear message from the Bulgarian milk producers doesn't awaken much enthusiasm among the scientists. A very few people actually benefited from all of the money that we poured in into the agriculture. All the, ba all the banks, the first guy the who banks, got the money yeah. and now the banks. Because it's all been converted into increasing prices of land. Yeah, nothing else. Yes. And uh, it, we do the same in Eastern Europe with Bulgaria, Romania, and mm -hmm. so on. Prices of, of land is going to, to go up. And, uh, and prices of, of housing in the rural areas have yeah. gone up yeah. very much yeah. because of the yeah. payments. Kjartan Poulsen is a member of the executive of the European Milk Board, which has around 100,000 members in 14 different countries. The European Milk Board organizes demonstrations in favor of sustainable milk production that would allow farmers to earn what they would regard as a respectable income. They're demanding a higher price for milk, less administration and the establishment of a fund that could buy up and close non-viable farms in times of crises. Hvor vi netop selv ville lægge pengene ind, men i første omgang så kunne de jo bruge pengene fra, fra intervention, i stedet for at lave intervention, og i stedet for at lave eksport, så ligge de penge, man normalt bruger til det, lægge det over i den her kasse, og så bruge det som en opform for opførstøtte inden for EU. Så kan man sige, så blev pengene også i EU. Så sendte vi det ikke ud og ødelagde markedet for dem, der bor i, i Afrika, eller i Mellemamerika, eller hvor nogle af de her eksportpulver, det ryger hen. Das ist für uns die wichtigste Forderung an diesem Moment. Wir müssen einen höheren Milchpreis haben, sehr, sehr schnell, weil die Bauern sterben. Und das müssen die Politiker wissen. Wir wollen einen fairen Preis und wenn sie nicht hören wollen, dann kommen wir wieder und wieder und erhöhen die Druck. Plan by Kjartan to establish a fund doesn't go down well with the researchers of AG 2020. They believe that the agricultural subsidy system should be reformed and partly abolished. The dairy farmers must learn to fend for themselves. The problem is that this guy is potentially going bankrupt. What, what does he do? I mean, he... yeah, but this is normal in an in an in an in a situation in a, in a capitalist economy. Yeah. So this is that people go bankrupt and yeah. others have the initiative to take money. And the bank takes money, over. And the bank takes over and they, they take the risk. And this yeah. farmer, does, for, this, for this situation, having in good times to save for bad times is something you can read the Bible on that. Yeah. But, but there, there, he can't organize this by himself. But so, so in, in, in principle, why should this farmer be treated in a different way as a normal shop owner who realizes that his costs are higher than his revenues and that this person will go bankrupt? I think you so should treat it in the same way, exactly the same way. And the way is, uh, is uh, this uh, activity important for the society itself? If yes, then the society should help at least the, the uh, activity. If not... This Sorry creates a moral conflict because maybe the farmer the is, is out of business because 
we are saving the industry of and automobiles. because of policy, cars. but maybe the farmer is out of business because he didn't do his job right. Milk prices reached bottom in November 2009 and have continued at much the same level in 2010. At the same time, the EU no longer guarantees a minimum price. Outside, Kjartan and the other farmers are yelling for reform and a common EU fund. Inside, behind the cordons, it seems the agricultural ministers are powerless to find a solution other than the one they've used for many decades, namely money. Ja, meine sehr verehrten Milchbauern, Milchbäuerinnen, wir waren also kurz in der Höhle des Löwen. Wir konnten mit Ratspräsident Allanson sprechen. Er hat uns die Ergebnisse der heutigen Beratungen mitgeteilt und die sehen gar nicht so negativ aus, wie das zunächst zu befürchten war. Und jeweils aber auch unseren Kommentar und unsere Einschätzung gleich dazu. They end up granting the angry demonstrators 280 million euro. Han, uh, han sagde, at de havde besluttet de der 280 millioner, desværre, kan man sige, men det var næsten forudsigeligt, at, uh, at de ville forsøge, og de vil altid forsøge med penge for os. Det er jo den mindste beslutning. Hvis de skal tage en afgørende beslutning, så skal de jo ændre på hele, hele grundlaget. Så det var kun som forventet i dag med pengene? Ja, det er kun for, uh, men jeg tror, at de beslutter mere. Ellers så, uh, så, så er står I her igen til næste år? Ja, så står vi nej, ikke til næste år om 14 dage, eller hvornår de nu mødes. Jeg, jeg ved ikke, hvornår de mødes igen, men, men uh, jeg, så er det sejt, vi her igen, ja. Introducing a new agricultural policy in 2012 will be an enormous task. Milk alone is complicated. But EU politicians face many other challenges that vary from country to country. Here are three examples from Bulgaria. This is a plant oil mill. A portion of the plant should have been made into biodiesel fuel. There are EU rules about this, only it doesn't happen in Bulgaria. Ето, това е било сигнално писмо, което сме били отправили към Европейската комисия, адресирано го господин Барозо и господин Пие Балкс, за липсата наистина на изпълнение на адекватна политика в биогоривата и на изпълнение на закона. The country's biofuel producers are out of the picture. Dimitar Zanfirov explains how a gigantic Russian oil company has persuaded the Bulgarian government to block biofuels, even though this is against all EU regulations. <laughs> Buffalo going for milking in central Bulgaria. Christo Drumev wants to establish a dairy for gourmet products. After a huge struggle, the EU has agreed to support his project and provide half the money. He wants to borrow the rest, but the banks daren't lend money out for agriculture. The buffalo farmer is powerless and deeply frustrated, and the EU politicians have another problem to solve. A third problem is the depopulation of rural areas. It's going on all over Europe. And here in the mountains of Bulgaria, modernization of agriculture will make 90% of the population leave the area, say the AG 2020 researchers. They also point out, however, that in some parts of the world, things are going the opposite way. While the world economy was on its knees in 2009, the gross national product of Brazil increased by 9% with agriculture as the driving force of the economy. Brazil experienced population growth, increased levels of employment and higher agricultural production.
In the middle of the Brazilian plateau, we find Simon Wallace, a New Zealander. A dairy farmer like Kjartan in Denmark and Aysen in Bulgaria, he's moved to a country where agricultural subsidies are a tenth of what they are in the EU. He knows that he is now exactly where the next agricultural revolution will take place. Here we've got a photo of the development of the farm. It's about marrying a commercial agenda with an ecological approach in a meaningful way. Some distance away, we meet a young Brazilian farmer, Desio Bosa. He's proud of his farm, Fazenda Boyadero, which lies on the Cerrado Plain, 1,000 kilometers south of the Amazon Delta. He has fields for crops and a small herd of 1,200 head of beef cattle. No more just letting the cattle out into the enormous fields, allowing both fields and cattle to take care of themselves. Now, first maize is grown, then soybeans, then sugarcane, and finally grass, and then the cattle can go into the field to graze. With this crop rotation, Desio Boza is convinced he'll be able to triple his output, while European farmers struggle to raise yields by two or three percent, experts believe that Brazil can triple its output from the same amount of land. Eight years ago, Simon Wallace set out to discover whether it was possible to run a viable dairy farm with a high level of animal welfare and in harmony with nature and local society. Today, he has succeeded already setting what looks like world records for productivity. In America or in New Zealand, we're used to producing approximately 15,000 litres of milk per hectare per year. Here in this system, we're producing 40,000 litres of milk. So almost three times in terms of productivity change. According to the AG 2020 researchers, Brazil's success is due in part to politicians, farmers and scientists working together. We should do the same in Europe. In the future, Kjartan Paulsen and Austin Heitoff will have to manage without subsidies and supply products for which consumers will want to pay the full price. <laughs>